Hello, my Oath Breakers and Realm Shakers out there, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. Today, I have for you another tasty Oathbreaker deck. It's Ren and Realm Breaker, and it will be a combo deck in celebration of March of the Machines release this weekend. Let's go ahead and get on over to that deck tech. So Ren and Wound Breaker is a four loyalty planeswalker that costs one and two green. The plus one is to untap one target land we control. It becomes a three three creature with vigilance, haste, and hexproof, I think, which is pretty wonderful. That's a lot for a land to be able to do in a turn. It gives us extra bodies and attackers, and we don't really care if our lands end up going to the graveyard due to combat reasons. You'll see why in a second. Our minus two lets us mill three cards and then we can return a permanent card from among them back to our hand. We have a couple things that are going to use that kind of mechanic throughout the deck and it's gonna help us get exactly what we need as we go. Our minus seven will give us an emblem that says we can play lands and cast permanent spells from our graveyard. For that reason, we are running a lot of permanents in this deck, including our land base. We're going to need you to stick tuned to the end since this is a land combo deck. It's good to see what all lands made the cut going from a 100 card commander deck down to a 60 card Oathbreaker. Let's start with our signature spell up next is Crop Rotation. For one green, we sacrifice a land and we search our library for any land we want and put it on the battlefield and then shuffle. This can help us get key lands or combo pieces in order to do big scary things. Uh, we have Azusa, Lost But Seeking, for two and a green. She lets us play two extra lands on each one of our turns. Very important to making sure we get all of our lands out into play. Corsair Cure Fix for one and two green is a two four that lets us play with the top card of our library revealed. We can play lands from the top card of our library, and whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life. All of these play into our deck's game plan very well, and the last ability will help give us a little bit of extra life to pat us out so maybe we can survive just a little bit longer. Next, we're running Deep Root Wayfinder for one in the green. It's a 2-3 out of March of the Machines. Whenever it deals combat to a player or a battle, we surveil one. Then we may return a land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Uh, Ren's ability to mill us three cards will also allow us to get some lands into the graveyard for Deep Root Wayfinder to hit and other cards like it. Doomscar Warrior for two and two green is a 4-3 with backup and his backup ability will give a creature he puts a woman counter on or himself trample and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or dry battle we look at that many cards from the top of our library we may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into our hand we put the rest on our bottom of our library in a random order just a way for us to dig a little bit deeper in the deck it also cares about that combat damage and just looking at cards Dryad of Elysian Grove for Tuna Green says we can play an additional land on each one of our turns and our lands count as every basic land type in addition to their other types. This will allow some of our non-force lands to act like force and actually tap for mana when they wouldn't usually tap for a green. Elvish Reclaimer for one green is a 1-2 and as long as there are three or more land cards in our graveyard he gets plus two plus two. If we pay two and tap him, we can sacrifice our land to search our library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield and tap. So he's basically a backup crop rotation for when our signature spell gets too expensive. Endurance for one and two green is a 3-4 flash reach creature that says when it enters the battlefield up to one target player, puts all the cards from their graveyard on the bottom of their library in a random order. We can play in, uh, Endurance for its evoke cost by exiling a green card from our hand. After we evoke it, it does get sacrificed. This card is mostly in here for graveyard hate. So I almost forgot to mention that. Eternal Witness for one and two ringing is a two one that lets us uh, return a card from our graveyard to our hand. This works well with our other mill and put stuff into our graveyard effects. Oracle of Muldaya for three and a green. Let's us play an additional land on each of our turns. We play the top card of our library revealed. We may play lands from the top of our library. So it's just a backup Corsair of crew fix. Overgrown Pest for Tuna Green is a 2-2 out of March of the Machines. It says when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a land or double-faced card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. 
Primeval Titan is playable in Oathbreaker and makes an appearance in this deck as a 6-6 six, six with Trample. That will let us get two land cards every time we attack or any time it enters the battlefield. It does put them onto the battlefield tapped. Questing Beast for two and a green is a 4-4 four, four with a lot of verbiage, but it's a Vigilance Death Test touch haste creature that can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less and when combat damage would be dealt by creatures we control can't be prevented and whenever questing beast deals combat damage to an opponent it deals that much damage target planeswalker that player controls questing beast partially makes it into this deck because it is good planeswalker hate and that will hit our other opponents Oathbreakers. but everything else about the card is still pretty great Runemat Excavator for Tuna Green says we can play land cards from our graveyard. Tireless Provisioner for Tuna Green is a 3-2 with landfall. It says whenever we play a land, we can create a food token or a treasure token. Both of those are really good. Food will give us extra life to get us into the late game. Treasure will get us extra mana when we desperately need it. Uh, Tireless Tracker for Tuna Green is a 3-2 with Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we investigate. This one will let us get a card to draw a card. Whenever we sacrifice a clue, we can put a 1-1 counter on Tireless Tracker. Vornclex is pretty wonderful in this deck. This is the new Vornclex out of March of the Machines for 3 and 2 green. It's a 6-6 Trample Reach creature. When he enters the battlefield, we search our library up to two forest cards, reveal them, and put them into our hand, then shuffle. We're not running a terribly large amount of force, as you'll see in the end, but that is still pretty useful if we don't get some of our other land mechanics. For 6 and 2 green, we can exile and return them to the battlefield transformed under owner's control. If we do spend that 8 mana, he becomes the Grand Evolution. As the Saga enters and after your draw step, you add a lore counter. So on the first verse, we mill 10 cards and put 2 creature cards from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. His, two, his second verse is to distribute 7 one one counters amongst any number of target creatures we control, which is an amazing pump effect. And his third verse is until end of turn creatures we control gain pay one this creature fights target creature we don't control then we exile grand evolution and return it to the battlefield as born clax that's amazing if we can get enough mana in lands going we can actually flip this go through the whole thing and you know we can actually get multiple uses out of this fairly easily the eight mana is generally not a huge problem in a mono green deck Wary Thespian for one in a green is a 3-1 that when it enters the battlefield or die, we surveil one, which means we look at the top card of our library and we may put that card into our graveyard. Um, this is kind of a tech piece for deciding what we want on top. If we have some of the cards out that let us play lands from the top of our library, we may want to get rid of something that's not a land to get to a land. Or if we have something that will get us a land from the graveyard, we may want to put the land in the graveyard. So there's a couple different ways you'll use this piece as a piece of tech throughout the games you play. Next up, we have Atraxa's Fall for one in green. It destroys target artifact, battle, enchantment, or creature with flying. That's a lot of stuff that it can hit for two mana. Really good spell with the ability to get permanence back from our graveyard. Sadly, we're not going to often be able to get Atraxa's Fall back. Um, Eternal Witness can get it for us, so it is a card that we might want to play more than once a game in the right situation. Balaged Recovery for Tuna Green returns target card from our graveyard to our hand, and on the back side it's a land that enters the battlefield tapped and taps for one green mana. I just needed another land, but I didn't want to put it in the mana base, if that makes any sense. We are running like 27 lands. Um, Explore costs one and green. We can play an additional land on the turn we play it, and we draw a card. Listening Dawn for two and two green is a sorcery with Incubate X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. So since we're planning on really ramping out and playing a lot of lands, this may get us two really big creatures, well, two really big artifacts with a lot of one one counters on them that we'll have to pay two mana to transform into Phyrexian creatures. It is a sorcery, it might be one of those cards you try to dig back out of your graveyard again. It's one of those that I'm thinking about building a completely deck and setting it as a, a signature spell, but that's for future video plans. Eyebrows. Uh, green Sun Zenith. For X and a green, we search our library for a green creature card with mana value X or less and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. And then we shuffle Green Sun Zenith into its owner's library. This will fetch up any of our pieces, including that really nice Warren Clex we just looked at. So. Important to think about, it's kind of a tech card and it's a tutor. 
Life from the Loan for one in a green is a sorcery. Return up to three target land cards from our graveyard to our hand. And then any time we would draw a card, we can instead choose to mill the top three cards from our library to take this from our graveyard and put back in our hand. That's how dredge works. Really good way to make sure we're getting lands out of our graveyard. It's a really good way to get milled pieces back or cards we've had to discard. So very useful. We are slightly concerned about graveyard hate, but that'll happen. Escape Shift for Tuna Green. It has a sacrifice any number of lands to search our library for up to that many land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library. This can be a really big combo piece and can lead us to some really massive big turns. Summer's Bloom for one in green lets us play up to three additional land cards that turn, which can be very amazing in the right situation. That is a huge ramp spell for us. We do have to have the lands playable. So we have to either have a card that lets us play from our grave or top of our library or have the three lands in our hand at the time. Beast Within for two in a green lets us destroy target permanent and its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. I like to run this destroy spell because not only does it hit my opponent's oath breakers it literally hits everything it's a good rule of thumb when you're choosing your damage spells for oath breaker to choose stuff that can also hit planeswalkers it'll save you more games than you will imagine you won't lose quite as many or at least you'll make it to to the end of the table more frequently cosmic hunger says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature planeswalker or battle this is a removal spell that's why it's in here. Seed of Hope for one green lets us mill two cards and then put a permanent card from the among cards milled this way into our hand. We gain two life. This is a passable version of Ren's second ability. Crucible of Worlds just simply lets us play lands from our graveyard. Horn of Greed says whenever a player plays a land, that player draws a card. This will help our opponents, but since we will be playing way more lands in a game, it's going to help us way more, and at three mana cost, it just felt like an auto-include in a land combo deck. Exploration for one green says we may pay an additional land on each of our turns, so that can be huge going forward into a long game. Ash Barons, costs, uh, Ash Barons is a land that taps for colorless or can be cycled for a basic land. Blast Zone kind of has an almost ratchet bomb type effect. We pay X and X and tap it to put charge counters on it. If we pay three and tap it, we can sacrifice to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of charge counters on it. We can uh, actually use blast counter, multi blast zone, sorry, multiple times over the course of the game. It kind of does many board wipe effects and we can play around it better than our opponents can. Next, we have Bishoju, who endure, endures. It's a legendary land that taps for a green, or we can discard from our hand and pay one in a green to destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land and opponent controls. That player may search the library for a land card with a basic land type and put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. We're running Command Tower. Crawling Barons taps for a colorless, or if we pay four, we put two 1-1 one -one counters on it. It becomes a creature till end of turn. There's no reason we can't pay that four multiple times and turn this into a massive monster and even use our fight mechanics with it to kill our opponent's planeswalkers. Keep that in mind. It's a cool idea. Dark Depths. I think a lot of people have seen this. It enters play with 10 ice counters on it. When all the ice counters are off of it, it becomes a 2020 Black Avatar Merit Lage creature with flying and indestructible. That's a lot of value. Desert of the Indomitable, it enters the battlefield tapped, taps for green, cycles for one in a green. Dryad Arbor is a forest, a creature, a land, it does it all. It is one of the forests we can go and find. It's not a basic, but do keep that in mind, the Vorinclex can find this land. Exotic Orchard, it just taps for one man in color. Field of the Dead is probably our biggest combo piece. If we hit shapes to shift, we can literally sack all of our lands, go get Field of the Dead. It reads, uh, it enters the battlefield tap, taps for colorless. Whenever it or another land enters the battlefield under our control, if we control seven or more lands with different names, we create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. If we scape shift into Field of the Dead for seven or more lands, we're going to create seven tokens because it's going to see all the lands entering play with it. So very good. Running base a basic forest. Gingerbread Cottage, if we control three or more forest winters, the battlefield, we can make a food token. We probably aren't ever going to really get to do that. 
Grasslands enters, oh, sorry, Grasslands enters the battlefield tapped, and it is a fetch land that will go get us a forest. We'll probably replay this from our graveyard multiple times, uh, just because it's a good value piece that will let us ramp every turn after turn and counts as one of our land plays. Ice Flow will let us remove attacking creatures from combat, so it made the list. Karn's Bastion lets us proliferate, which is pretty good if we ever want to get to Renin 6's final ability. Lotus Field will ramp us three mana. We do have to sacrifice a couple lands when it comes into play, but it is also a hexproof land, so it's relatively protected from enemy hate. Maze of Ith lets us remove attacking opponent creatures from combat. Mountain Valley enters Battlefield Tapped. It's a fetch land. It'll go get us a forest. Again, we'll probably replay this multiple times in order to get value and get all of our lands out. Pendlehaven is a legendary land. Taps for green, and we can tap it to make a 1-1 one, one creature plus 1 plus 2 till end of turn. Prismatic Vista is another fetch land. It will let us search our library for a basic land card specifically, though. Tap Seed Forest is a forest, enters the battlefield tapped, and we can pay one green and tap it to gain one life if we control two or more green permanents. Shimmer Veil is a snow land that we can make a forest. We have a snow covered forest. Thespian Stage, it taps for color, so we can pay two and tap it to have it become target, uh, have it become a copy of a target land, except it has that ability. This being staged does a really good uh, Dark Depths impersonation. Since it's already in play, it won't have the 10 Ice Flow counters on. It'll immediately get sacked and turned into a 2020 flying lifelink invincible creature. On the other hand, you can also turn it into an extra Fields of the Dead if you want to double all the zombie tokens you're making whenever you play a land or have a land enter the battlefield under your control. Tranquil Thicket is a green land that cycles for a green. Vesuva enters the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land on the battlefield, so we're going to use that very similar to Thespian Stage. And that's it. That is the whole of the deck. I hope you guys liked the deck in the video and that you stayed tuned to the end to see the mana base. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you could like, share, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.